Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I'm taking a beautiful quilt top that I completed not too long ago. And I've actually seen some of my sewing room friends have made a similar quilt and I really enjoy seeing those pictures. Today I'm gonna to take my quilt top and I'm going to turn it into a completed quilt. Let's get started. Here's the quilt top that I will be completing today. I was kind of surprised that I, it has been a, almost exactly a year since I put this together. I thought it had been more recent, but I'm gonna leave a link to both videos, the block, the roses in bloom block, and I also have a video with how I made that border with the yellow fence. So after I laid my quilt on my batting on the floor, I made sure that I had at least a couple of inches left over on the edges so that if I had any movement with the quilt, uh, I'd still have batting underneath. It just gives me a little bit of wiggle room. I have the quilt top on my batting. I used a 505 spray adhesive, a temporary adhesive on the batting, and I spread the quilt top right on top of the batting. So I begin in the middle and I spray just a little bit. I try to do a light spray and I work from the middle out. And as I spread it down, I try to sort of smooth starting in the center and moving out and sort of laying the edges down as I go. Here's the backing fabric that I purchased recently and it just went right along with this quilt. I didn't want too much green or yellow on the back. I thought I had enough of that on the front, but I really like the way this fabric complements the front of the quilt. After spreading it down and making sure I had a big enough piece, I went ahead and used that 505 spray and did just the same thing that I did on the front. I moved the backing fabric away start, starting in the middle and um, smoothed it down. Next up, I'll be quilting these roses, and I wanted to give you an idea of what the quilting lines will look like. Uh, the, the seams are all very straight, and I wanted to soften that rose, and what I'll be doing is I'll start in the middle of the flower, and I'll just move right around with a wavy line all the way through each of these blocks. I took my all-purpose sewing foot off my machine and I have this uh, quilting foot and I'm going to be attaching that. I also need to put the feed dogs down on my machine. I'll begin with one of the roses sort of towards the center of my quilt and I will quilt one block at a time, beginning in the middle of the quilt and then moving out.
I'll try to show you how I did each of these blocks. I began in the middle of the block and just started working around with that wavy line. I'm using a cream color thread. It was kind of hard to decide what color to use since there are so many colors in this quilt. But I just worked, like I said, one block at a time, one rose at a time, beginning in the middle and working out with that wavy line. For the border, I decided to go through the long yellow strips in the border here. And again, I'll just be using a wavy line. And then when I get to those corner roses, I will do the same thing I did in the center, working around the circle with a wavy line. Here's a little close-up I'm trying to show you of what those wavy lo lines look like on top of those roses. I do like the way this turned out and the roses gave me a little inspiration on how I was going to do the quilting. Next up, I had to trim that quilt, getting it ready for the binding. So I just followed the quilt top with my ruler and rotary blade, trimmed away the excess, and then I'll be ready for the binding. Thank you. 
Strips were cut two and a half inches wide and I will be joining them together to make one long binding strip after putting them right sides together, sort of at a 90 degree angle here. I'm gonna sew from corner to corner and then after putting them all together, I'll trim off the excess triangles. After pressing my binding in half, I will be attaching it to the front of my quilt I, and I also want to hand sew the back. So I'm going to put this on the front of my quilt and I'll begin in the middle of one of those sides and I'm going to leave about a 12 inch tail before beginning and when I get to the end I'll show you how I'm going to join those two ends. So when I got to the end I actually did not get all the way to the corner. I stopped about a quarter inch before the end and I pivoted with a seam and then I pulled the binding up and down and put a fold right there on the edge of the quilt and I'll begin sewing at the top of that fold so that when I turn that binding over it, it will have a nice corner. So here you can see I stopped before uh, getting all the way around and I have a nice opening and I'll be folding that left side of the binding and cutting it straight across there and then with the right side of the binding I'm going to put a fold right next to where I trimmed and I'll use that piece that I trimmed away which is two and a half inches. I'll put it right on the fold and I'll trim just using that little piece of fabric as my guide so that my binding is now exactly two and a half inches longer than the quilt basically and uh, I will put these ends together just like I had joined the long pieces and I'm going to pin and I kind of have to scrunch that quilt up to get this seam in. I'll sew across from corner to corner trim away that leftover triangle area and make sure that it fits. I always make sure it fits before I trim it away and then I will continue sewing and close up that gap. All I have to do now is roll that binding to the back and I'll be doing some pinning and this is 
a nice evening sewing job. I like to do some quiet work in the evenings and I finished this towards the end of the day. So this was really the perfect thing to finish at the end of my day. Here's the thread that I think will match pretty well with that binding. I'm hoping it will blend in. I'm going to try to make some little stitches and hopefully they won't show up too much. And this will be a nice thing to work on this evening. I love this Roses in Bloom quilt. I'm so happy that it has a home now. It was a lot of fun to choose all of these really pretty scraps to put together in this beautiful quilt. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.